on the far side, he built that massive building. It was his mausoleum. At 50 metres, it was greater than any other mausoleum, more massive than any building in the city, higher than Trajan's Column or even the Pantheon. And it was on the completely uncluttered west bank of the Tiber, so no one could miss it. An increasingly unpopular Hadrian believed that people were conspiring against him. In his paranoia, he believed that family members were among them. He executed his great-nephew, Fuscus, and he even forced the suicide of his 90-year-old brother-in-law, Servianus. Just before the old man took poison, he cursed Hadrian. He said, that I am guilty of no wrong, you gods are well aware. As for Hadrian, this is my only prayer. May he long for death, but be unable to die. And this last prayer of the old man was answered by the gods. Hadrian's fate may well have been sealed long since. The incredibly lifelike sculpture at the British Museum shows him to have a deep lateral crease in his earlobes, a sure sign, according to cardiologists, of a tendency to heart disease. Suffering from constant hemorrhaging, dropsy, shortness of breath, Hadrian began to hate the very life he had sought so desperately to prolong. He even bungled attempts at taking his own life. But briefly cheered, perhaps, by the death of his wife Sabina, Hadrian showed that he was capable of one last flash of brilliance. He appointed not only his immediate successor, Antoninus Pius, to be the next emperor, but also the two after that, Marcus Aurelius, another one of Rome's finest emperors, and Lucius Verus, thus ensuring decades of further peace for Rome. Hadrian finally died on the 10th of July, 138 AD, age 62, and you won't be cracking your usual jokes.